Nick Nurse before the ball game wasn't happy. Raptor Nation wasn't happy. And this was a complete turnaround. I'll tell you, one guy who was happy tonight was Nick Nurse. And also, OG Ananobi played one of his most complete games of the season, Sam. Yeah, Rob, we talked about OG before uh, the telecast tonight, how consistent he's been, how reliable he's been. And the thing I like about his game, he doesn't chase the ball. Look, the Raptors are an unselfish team. They're going to move the basketball, and he's always in position, and he takes what the defense gives him. If you give him a wide-open three, he's shot ready, he gives his feet set, and he knocks it down. If you run at him out of control, he will put the ball on the floor and take it all the way to the basket, either finish or or make that pass. The thing I like about this young man, he's probably their best perimeter defender. He doesn't have, you don't have to run plays for him. He doesn't chase the ball, but he does all the little things well. And then this is the last but not least thing. He is the consummate team player. He does all the little things great, and he does the big things well. And he's always there in those big moments to either come up with a big rebound, a steal, or a rebound. So OG is coming into his own, and he's starting to... To appeal to Nick Nurse and say, hey, give me a little bit more, coach. Feed me a little bit more. Well, it's interesting, Sam, because, you know, the first six, seven, eight games of the season, he was not seeing his opportunities. He was shying away from his opportunities. Then at times, he forced shots to get some shots. Now everything, as you said, is coming naturally. When he's got the three, he fakes. When he doesn't have the three, moves positions, gets a shot. He's getting to the bucket. He's scoring off of his defense. And the great thing is... The more the offense is improving, there's no, there's no drop-off at a defensive end. He continues to be one of the strong points of this team defensively. This wasn't a masterpiece by any stretch. There were some blemishes. Uh, they flirted with the lead again. Miami came back, game of runs, plus 30 from beyond the arc. One thing that they have to be happier with, Leo, was their play against the zone, which absolutely suffocated them two nights ago. Yeah, I mean, they, they also had some rough patches like they did Wednesday night, yet at the same time, they were able to figure it out. They figured out when it mattered most. The Miami Heat made a run, they got back into the game, and all of a sudden the Raptors had to do a few different things. And what they did was move. They took what was easy. They got into the paint, they made the pass, they attacked the rim, and here Stanley Johnson did a great job in the fourth quarter. Had three or four really nice passes, moved the ball, and also, right here, just that one dribble brings in two defenders, and you kick it back out to the open man. Simple basketball. And once they relaxed and figured that out, it was their game. Great pass here again. Stanley Johnson to OG Ananobi. Sam, you could see how much more confident they got, and they just made the easy plays to move Miami. Yeah, Leo, and the Raptors figured something out tonight. You know, they ran their man-to-man -man offense against the zone. And this is the thing we used to talk about all the time. NBA teams got 40 man-to-man -man offenses. They have one offense against the zone. So what the Raptors did tonight, they just ran some of their man-to-man -man offense. If you watch those clips, Leo, that you talked about, look at the Miami Heat cross-checking each other, going into each other's zone. And once you have a team that's playing zone and you have defense defenders going into each other's zone to defend, then they're all discombobulated. And the Raptors did a great job of moving the ball. And, Leo, you know this. Once that ball starts moving and you know the ball is coming to you, it gives you an opportunity to be shot ready. They weren't surprised by the zone tonight, and they played a lot better against it. Yeah, a lot better, and they'll try to continue that against Indiana back-to-back. -back. Sam, you were there 15 years ago today. Kobe Bryant, one of the greatest games ever, 81 points. Guess what Miami scored tonight? 81 points. Maybe there is some hey. numerology there, numbers as the Raptors win big against the Heat tonight. Back to Sports Center. It all goes full circle. Sticking with the NBA, Nets and Cavs. Kyrie Irving's return was upstaged by Colin Sexton on Wednesday. Sexton, 42 points in Cleveland's double overtime win. Early on, it's James Harden lunging layup. Going to work between the legs. Irving finishes in traffic. Brooklyn missing one third of its big three. Kevin Durant getting the night off. Other end now, how about Sexton? Spotting Jarrett Allen throwing it down with authority. Allen joined the Cavs in the 14. Harden deal. Having a little chuckle there. Harden, triple doubles in two of his first three games with Brooklyn. And here in the third, well, that's not what they want from him. Turns it over. Darius Garland floats it for Allen. That caps a 20-5 run. Cleveland up 14 after three. And now in the fourth, it's Irving. Doing work on Sexton and the foul. Kyrie trying to keep Brooklyn in it. 
But it looks like the Cavs, oh yeah, they've done it again over the Nets. Celtics 76ers, Marcus Smart was not happy with Joel Embiid flopping in their last meeting on Wednesday, and Embiid had interesting comments on him post-game. Marcus Smart just told me that I flail a lot. Come on. Uh, I mean, I'm sure he knows himself and he knows his game, too. Uh, you know, he does a lot of that. The two would meet again after Embiid gets the rebound off the smart miss. Looks like Embiid gives him an elbow. No foul was called, but on the replay shows Embiid just misses him. But the two would talk it out. No issues at all. That looked like a flop. Uh, third quarter, Embiid appears to get pushed down by Daniel Tice. No foul is called. Embiid appears to be rubbing his neck, but he would stay in the game. Later in the third, more Embiid versus Smart. Embiid gets fouled from the Celtics guard. Smart is not too happy about it and gets a technical foul on the play. Sixers are up late in the fourth. Going back to the Raptors now, 20-point win over the Heat, and here's head coach Nick Nurse. Coach, good to see you again. Going to start off with uh, Doug Smith from the Toronto Star. Even Nick, congratulations on the win. Um, your team has given up a lot of big leads this year, but I don't think they've ever responded as well as they did tonight. Well, what do you, did you see as a difference in that regard? Well, I guess we just were playing, I think, um, for the most part, you know, a lot harder, Doug, and doing things a lot better, right? I think that um, and we didn't get discouraged. We just kind of kept doing it. We knew we had to We knew we knew had to play each possession a certain way, and we did that tonight, and I think that was, you know, just enabled us to get back and get, get command of the game. There were a couple of plays. I think Stanley made a big corner three, really well contested, and then OG had a steal and a run out dunk. Those are the, the kind of tempo-changing plays you hadn't been getting all the time? Yeah, those were big ones. I thought OG, OG throw OG's corner. He had, OG had a yeah. corner step, side step or two in there that I thought, you know, really uh, we hadn't scored in a, in a bit. And that one, that one kind of, I think, got the lid off the basket for us a little bit, so to speak. And, but yeah, I mean, I, again, I, you know, you can, it's, it's pretty much night and day, you know, the effort defensively. And that's going to lead again. I, I just, I just believe that. When you're moving hard on defense, you're going to move hard on offense. It's going to help at the other end too. You know, it help, it helps pace of play, and we were we were certainly flying around tonight on D. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. Have a safe trip up to see your old friend Nate. Thanks, Doug. Next question goes to Josh Lewinberg from TSN. Hey, Nick. Um, you were you were pretty clear before the game that the effort the other night was unacceptable. Um, this is, for the most part, an experienced veteran group. Do you have to express that to them after the game and, and before the game tonight, or is that just something that you sense that, that these guys acknowledge, realized, and were ready to kind of bounce back from today? I don't agree with you that it's an experienced veteran group, Josh. It's a young, very, very young team tonight. Okay. Um, do you have to express that to them then, um, or or is that something that they? Well, when we don't play well, we fix we fix what we didn't like. Josh, play better. Okay. Um, I asked you about Aaron the other day as well. It seems like he's starting to turn the corner a little bit in terms of his comfort level, especially on the defensive end. What what did you make of the extended minutes that he gave you today? Playing with a little more feel, confidence, and physicality. I think he's rebounding better, blocking out better. Thanks, sir. Next question goes to Michael Grange from Sportsnet. Hey, Nick. Uh, that stretch you had uh, when the second unit went in in the first quarter and, and the heat started, you know, the turnovers mounted up and the heat started kind of, it looked like the game could have flipped. But, you know, you kept the lead in double figures sort of similar scenario to start the second half. How significant was that, that even as the offense stalled at times, the turnovers kind of got up there a little bit, you were able to, you know, force them to miss on the other end? Yeah, I think we would have had a really, really good offensive night, Mike, without all those turnovers. Right? We were really doing the right things and doing things well. 
<laughs> just and just uh, kind of. But some of them were just unforced errors on on our our part. I, I thought, you know, a lot of them in a physical game like it was when you're driving, you kind of got to get back to a physical position. Usually, that's two feet and down and. 